But the four entropies are not enough. I will introduce yet another kind of entropy, and that is called the relative entropy. I show you the definition. So we have two classical pro probability distributions, PI and QI, where I denote the distribution PI as a whole as, sig uh, as rho, and the second distribution with the probabilities QI as sigma. And then you define a so-called relative entropy of these two distributions. It's written with these double vertical lines in the middle. Yeah, so S of rho, relative entropy of rho and sigma yeah, with these double vertical lines. And it's defined by the formula that you see on the right hand side. Yes, so it's the sum of pi log pi minus the sum pi log qi. This mathematical object has many interesting properties. Here I would like to limit myself to just two properties. The first property states that this relative entropy is never negative. The proof is not so difficult and maybe I will put the proof also on the problem set. Uh, that's quite instructive to have a look at the proof. So it's not difficult but it's not trivial either. Do you need a little trick and you have to think of that little trick. So the, the relative entropy is never negative and in fact it's strictly positive except when the two distributions are exactly equal. Yeah? So it's the relative entropy is zero if the two probability distributions are exactly identical and if not it's strictly positive. You can also show that the larger the um, differences between the two distributions, the larger the relative entropy, qualitatively speaking. Yeah, you can uh, cast this in more precise mathematical language. But it turns out that the, the relative entropy is a very good measure for the difference between two probability distributions. The more they differ, the more they deviate from each other, the larger their relative entropy. So it's a kind of distance measure between probability distributions. It's not in the mathematical sense a metric, however, because the definition of the um, relative entropy is not symmetric in rho and sigma. Yeah? So the, the relative entropy of sigma and rho uh, it's not the same as the relative entropy of rho and sigma. Yeah? So if you interchange the two arguments, it's not identical. You can show that it's approximately symmetric if rho and sigma are close to each other. Yeah? Then it's, you can do a Taylor expansion in the, sort of in the delta probabilities and you see um, it's approximately quadratic in the, in the deltas, in the probability deltas. So it's approximately symmetric. But this symmetry uh, doesn't extend to um, pro distributions that are further apart. Yeah? So I think mathematically it's called a divergence, but not a metric. So this is the first uh, property and the second interesting property is that you can relate the mutual information that we just defined on the previous page to the relative entropy and the the connection is given by this formula you can write the mutual information as a weighted average 
of relative entropies. It's weighted with the probabilities of the various outcomes of experiment A. And then you have the, prob the um, relative entropy of the conditional probability distribution of B given a specific outcome AI of experiment A and the unconditional probability distribution rho b. So when you don't know the outcome of A. And if you look at this formula, it's again quite plausible. If you think of the meaning of the various terms, we said on the left hand side, the mutual information is a quantity that tells you how much information the outcome of A already provides about the outcome of B. On the right hand side, we said the relative entropy is a measure for the for how different two probability distributions are. Now what do you expect when 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 the outcome of A already tells you a lot about the outcome of B. This means the two are strongly correlated. This means in turn that if I tell you the outcome of experiment A, then this strongly modifies your expectations about the outcome of experiment B. So it strongly modifies the probability distribution that you assign to uh, experiment B. So this means that the conditional probability distribution of B should differ significantly from the probability distribution of B before you learned the outcome of A. Yeah? So learning the outcome of A has a strong impact on the probability distribution. The conditional one differs significantly from the previous one without knowing the result of A. Now this difference of the two probability distributions is, is measured by the relative entropy. And that's what you have on the right hand side. Yeah? So with these qualitative arguments, it's a relationship that's plausible and actually it can be made uh, precise with this mathematical formula.